which I think I also intend to, to dispense with, is the motion, the uh, amendment proposed by the Honorable Kemani Ichongwa, member for Kikuyu constituency, who has written to me uh, requesting that I allow the member for Daguridi South, the Honorable Kiari KJ Waweru, to move on his behalf. I have uh, approved that request. Honorable Kiari. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and it is true, I am holding brief for the Chairman Budget Committee Emeritus, the Honorable Kemani Ishungwa, who happens to be my neighbor. And Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Kemani Ishongwa gives notice uh, that uh, he wishes to move the following amendments to the motion on the report of the Budget and Appropriations Committee on the Median Term Debt Management Strategy for the Financial Year 2022-2023. Mr. Speaker, the amendment is that the motion be amended by inserting the following new paragraph, that the House notes that the approval of the 2022-2023 budget policy statement and the 2022-2023 medium-term debt management strategy is not to be construed to imply the approval of the increase of the national debt limit, which is now standing at 9 trillion Kenya shillings, as stipulated under legal notice number 155 on the Public Finance Management Act number 18 of 2012. Mr. Speaker, the amendment that uh, the Honorable Kemani Shongwa is seeking to move is simple, Mr. Speaker, because it is seeking to buttress and in fact to emphasize and bring to the attention of this house and knowledge of this house that uh, we already know that should we approve this BPS, and the debt management strategy, it shall not be construed to be an approval to exceed our debt ceiling of 9 trillion Kenya shillings that is stipulated in the PFM Act, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, according to the government statistics that uh, everyone is privy to, as of December last year, the debt reported by the National Treasury and the CBK was at around 8.2 trillion Kenya shillings. Mr. Speaker, it is further expected that um, by end of June 2022, it is estimated that this figure is going to hit the 8.6 trillion mark, Mr. Speaker. And this is information that is even available at the uh, Parliamentary Budget Office. Mr. Speaker, it so then says that the fiscal space available between, uh, from, from the 1st of July is only 400 billion Kenya shillings. So Mr. Speaker, this proposal um, is simply pricking the conscience of this House, Mr. Speaker, that despite the House having approved the, amendment, the amended motion, which was brought here by the majority leader, um, that the committee report, that the, 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 you know, the, the, the majority leader was amending what the committee had proposed that we stay within the 400 billion uh, space, Mr. Speaker, that even as we do so, we shall not be trying to increase the debt ceiling using a back door, Mr. Speaker. What this means is that with our debt ceiling being approved at 9 trillion, the fiscal space available for budgeting should still stay at the 4 billion mark, Mr. Speaker. In their report, the committee did appreciate these facts with the BPS moved in its original form before it was amended. And that is why the Honorable Kemani Ishongwa is seeking to bring to the attention of this House that even with us moving the BPS as amended and even with the medium term uh, debt management strategy, we are not attempting to increase the debt ceiling in any way, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, this amendment that the Honorable Kimani Ishungwa is moving is actually an insurance that this House is taking. But also being an insurance, it's also an assurance that we're giving to the public, Mr. Speaker, that this House does understand that the work of pushing the budget ceiling is actually 
stipulated and provided for in, um, in, in um, delegated regulations that should be coming as a motion to this House through the Committee of Delegated uh, Legislation. Mr. Speaker, it is clear to the minds of us who are in this House that anybody willing to increase the debt ceiling must come before this House and with a specific motion seek the approval of this House to increase the debt ceiling in the usual and legal and constitutional manner through the Delegated Legislation Committee and the House shall consider such a motion on its merits or demerits, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, everybody in this country is worried about our debt levels. And Mr. Speaker, what we are trying to do is to make sure that nobody will come back here, either in April or in May, and tell us that the debt ceiling has been busted, Mr. Speaker, or that we have gone beyond the, 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 the debt ceiling. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Kimani Shongwa was very keen to move this motion because in his own words, he says that whenever a motion of this nature comes to this house in the recent times, there has been a semblance of incentives to people, Mr. Speaker, for them to pass some what he sees in his mind as illegal, um, illegal um, uh, attempts at uh, bringing matters through the back door. So, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Kimani Shongwa uh, did want for me to rise and give this insurance to this house and also an assurance to the people that we will not be expecting to see the debt ceiling increased by having um, um, the, 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 the issue that was brought by the majority speaker where he amended the original yeah, yeah, report yes, by yes, the minute, Just a minute, Honorable Kiari, there yes. is a point of order, but also to inform you there is no majority speaker. A majority leader, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I just, I've just listened very carefully on the pronouncement by uh, my good brother here, talking about incentives being brought to this house to be able to change the debt ceilings. Can you please expand on that? I don't want to be part of that. Can you expand on that, please? Uh, well, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I am a very small man, Mr. Speaker. I have no capacity to threaten anyone, and I'm not even out here to threaten anyone but Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, my training is in journalism. And, Mr. Speaker, I can tell you I am a man of means. I know what happens when there is a critical motion in this house, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, if the honorable uh, member is keen to interrogate me on this matter, you know I'm a man of means, I could even produce photos, Mr. Speaker, of people making a beeline to certain offices, Mr. Speaker, after certain motions have been passed here, Mr. Speaker. And I, being an artist, can even produce photos, Mr. Speaker, photos of which I am ready to even appear before the Powers and Privileges Committee, Mr. Speaker, where I would even present evidence that there are such uh, matters that do happen in this House, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I would wish that the Honorable Member would allow me to prosecute my point so that we can move on and do what it is that is needed to happen, Mr. Speaker. No. Mr. Speaker, I... I personally did no, witness on, such an incident last week, Mr. No, Speaker. No, no, so the Honorable no, Member must no, understand no, 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 that no, no, I'm no, no, talking no, about no, something I know no, about, no, no, Mr. Speaker. Honorable please. Honorable Anyonyi is not suspended. Honorable Mr. Speaker, this House, in all due respect, we do not want to be told some people are being bribed here to be able to pass certain information. Particularly this budget, which is very, very important. You know, the problem, the problem with you members is one. I thought you, if you pursue, he talked about um, incentives. I, don't, I think that, that is where we should. What are these incentives? Yes, that's what I want to know. But now you, you seem to be now. <laughs> thank now you, you Mr. Speaker. Different what, what thank incentives? you, thank you. Let him put it here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You do understand the drift of the matter that I'm trying to raise, Mr. Speaker. And I would not want this member to push me to be a bit more specific to start talking about KEMSA incentives that have been pushed in this house and are making Let decisions be made in certain budget, ways. Mr. Budget. Speaker, I can get there's, more there's specific. A, there's a point of, order from the, point of order from the chair of budget. Chair, the claim 
by my good friend, uh, preposterous honorable speaker, is demeaning to this house because when you say that um, members are getting incentives to vote in a certain way, honorable speaker, we are paid a salary and allowances to work in this parliament. We don't need any other incentive to vote in one way or the other. And we have to make it very clear, if you are defeated in terms of numbers, Honorable Speaker, we were here. When they were asking for a division, they could not even raise 30 members. If you are defeated on the numbers, kindly don't uh, try to push the back, you know, pass the back and say that uh, there are incentives. I don't think there are any incentives. If people are queuing, people can queue for different reasons. And I don't understand why my good friend is making such serious claims which are not founded. Honorable Speaker. But, but you see, there's no, is there anything wrong with the queuing? I thought you queue even at the airport. So if you queue at the airport to, to board your plane, if you are going to travel into some destination. But, but you see, the only... Honorable you are an old member, you know the rules. Please, if you want to make an intervention, just press your intervention button. There are very many members who have pressed their intervention buttons. Let me, let me hear what... But, you see, even as you raise this issue, you are not making any, any particular demand. What is it that you want the chair, the chair to do? So you are just... You are, you, honorable Anyonyi, on two occasions, He's just, uh, he's just saying that uh, something has been said. So, can I teach you how it, uh, what, you should, what you should have said? That the member should, uh, should substantiate or withdraw. Now, you never said anything like that. So, I'm just seeing people saying, oh, getting agitated. But, you know... Honorable Abdul Samad, I see you also put an intervention. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, as you rightfully put it, and as a two-time member, I think it is only right, Mr. Speaker, more so, more so, this is a house that has representatives who are elected. More so, Mr. Speaker, when the honorable member, and he needs to explain whether he's speaking on behalf of Honorable Ichungwa or he's speaking on his own behalf. Failure for him to substantiate that there are any forms of incentives, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, the words incentives itself demeans, demeans the honor of being called a member of parliament. So unless he substantiates, it is only right that the honorable member does the honorable thing by withdrawing and profusely apologizing to the millions of Kenyans who are listening to him. It is totally wrong and out of order. And Mr. Speaker, I heard something else. And this is why it even goes, you know, I, and, and I think the problem is that he, is, he, he has not read what is actually on the order papers. He mentioned on people being, incent being given incentives like they were given during the Kemsa report. As far as I know, Mr. Speaker, I only, and it's on record, and I'm willing the same way he mentioned the word the Kemsa report, Mr. Speaker, I chair the Public Investments Committee, Mr. Speaker. I just gave a notice of motion last week where we renewed because of the fact that we, we had just come back from, from a short recess, Mr. Speaker. So it's only right. If we want to politicize this house, it is very easy. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, if he wants to go on to the point that Honorable Ishungo wants to say, it is the same words that the leader of majority has rightfully said that this particular motion that we are passing has got nothing to do with confirming or affirming that the country's debt ceiling is being increased. The leader of majority even, and I can actually say, has taught the honorable member that there are ways and means at which government can be able to bring in motions or anything, whether it is through the Public Finance Management Act or any other way, Mr. Speaker, for us to be able to increase that ceiling. And if it is an issue of, of just trying to politicize matters, Mr. Speaker, as you rightfully put it, we have public platforms and dioceses out there, you know, and if they cannot be able to raise their numbers... So now, 
So what is your... What is, what he, is, need, he needs to withdraw, Mr. Speaker, or substantiate, and not just withdraw. And I'm seeing that, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, Mr. Speaker, I can actually say it with a lot of confidence and, uh, and, and anything else. They are saying this because uh, uh, so some of these members are looking for positions of deputy president and other positions, and they are willing really, really hard to be able to... Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, he, needs we, to, uh, uh, he needs to either substantiate, failure for him to substantiate, and he said that he's a journalist of high repute, he's got photos or whatever it is, he needs to substantiate. Failure for him to substantiate, Mr. Speaker, you have to declare him out of order, and if need be as well, this particular amendment, whether it is going to be ruled someone else to, to bring this amendment, or we just vote on to this, and he's had his uh, bonga points. Who are you informing? No, 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 no. Honorable Kerry, you've been challenged by the member from Vita to either substantiate. No, don't raise your hand, Honorable Didi Nyoro. It is not you. It is the Honorable Kerry who made the, the allegation. And Honorable Didi Nyoro, you don't just raise your hand and then you start to, speaking on your phone. When, when I'm, when I thought, surely, I, I said, degenerate into this. No, nobody. There's nobody. The Honorable Kerry is the one who has the floor. Is the one who may, who uttered those words. Please respond, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, it's the English who say that the afraid, the, the guilty are always afraid. No, Mr. Speaker, a great man by the name of Leo Muhammad once said that if a stone is thrown among a pack of dogs, the one that barks loudest is the one that has been hit by that stone, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I too am a member of this house, and Honor I do stand for Honor the dignity of this house, Mr. Honorable Speaker. Kiarie, Honorable Kiarie, yes. are you willing to substantiate? That's what I'm getting to, Mr. Speaker. No, 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 please, that is not substantiation. Please, and I, let, me, let, me, let me just remind you. Yes. Look at your standing order number 107, please. Please, don't, let's not uh, now, I will not allow you to, to use ones that are going to be uh, unparliamentary. So please, just substantiate. If you are not able to, withdraw and apologize. There cannot be a point of, where did you learn these things? Please, you're almost finishing five years and somebody is being told to substantiate. You are, you are, you are raising your hand up on a did you saying point of order. Where? Where on earth? Certainly not under my watch. Honorable Kerry, proceed. Mr. Speaker, my claim, which I would be ready to substantiate, was that there are times when critical matters do come here, and incentives decide how the matter is decided, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Kerry, substantiate. Say, I say, and, and the, and the we charge. Are the, we are on this motion. Yes, Please. the charge from the Honorable uh, Abdul Swamad is actually a false charge, Mr. Speaker. There is no way I referred to the KEMSA report. In fact, what I said Honorable is Kiarie. that KEMSA on, on, on incentives Kiarie. have been, uh, that on. my claim was that there are KEMSA incentives that are influencing decisions in this house, Mr. Speaker. Honorable and Kiarie. that is a Honorable claim Kiarie. that Honorable, I am weak. Honorable Kiarie. Honorable Kiarie. Honorable Kiarie. you use the ones incentives even much earlier than before you refer to KEMSA. So what are those incentives? That is what you are required to substantiate. If you are not able to, you just withdraw and apologize to the House. This is very simple. Mr. Speaker, I am well guided. And, I, and my claim was that, Mr. Speaker, I, as a journalist, have witnessed situations where a motion is passed here, and we, and we see people making a beeline for certain offices in this building, Mr. Speaker, where the incentives, which I referred to as KEMSA incentives, do influence how decisions are made, Mr. Speaker. And I further went on to say Honorable that Kerry. I am a journalist. Hon Honorable Kerry, I've given you now two opportunities to substantiate uh, what, what incentives you refer to. 
talking about uh, B line or others is not substantiation. Remember, it is within my province to determine whether you have actually substantiated. If I determine that you haven't, I will, I will, I will proceed to make the next uh, decision. So please, for the last time, if you are not able to substantiate the issue of incentives, it is not enough to tell me that uh, you have taken photographs. You know, I'm not interested in photographs now. Photographs will not show that, they will not show that that is photograph an incentive. Surely, Honorable Kieri, I'm sure you are. You have been taking very many photographs, not to incentivize you to do anything. Um, so, Mr. Speaker, the word incentive, as, is, as I understand it, in the English language, means, um, means that a thing that motivates or encourages someone to do something, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, if a photo of people queuing to receive an incentive is not substantiation enough, Mr. Speaker, I am willing to appear before any fitting committee of this House, including the Committee of Powers and Privileges, to present evidence that incentives are actually influencing decisions in this House, Mr. Honorable Speaker. Kari, and Mr. Kari. Speaker, if to withdraw, Mr. Mr. Speaker, if, if that itself, if I cannot get an opportunity to appear before such a committee, then Mr. Speaker, I will withdraw and apologize because Mr. Speaker, the bigger issue is the issue of debt, Mr. Speaker. The issue of debt in this country as we speak, Mr. Speaker, is a thorn in the flesh and being a thorn in the flesh of the people of Kenya, the people of Kenya are willing to know, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Kiari, Honorable Kiari, yes. Honorable Kiari, so, so that, no, Honorable Sankok, you know, uh, you know, the, you know the, the English grammar is quite easy to many of us, to some of us. Some, I, I, to some of us. The Honorable Kiari said if, if he is willing but he has not said he has withdrawn. No, Honorable Sangok, please, you cannot, you know you are looking this way. Just look, 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 look <laughs> in front. So that, because you may, you, when you turn, you don't seem to hear what he is saying. He is saying he is willing. If he is not going to be given a chance to appear what, he is willing. So these conditions, these conditions are being given to who? If, what? Honorable Kiarie so that we can proceed with this matter. Just do the simple thing, withdraw and apologize to the House. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, I do benefit greatly from uh, guidance from you, Mr. Speaker. And, and Mr. Speaker, I do withdraw and apologize, Mr. Speaker. Absolutely. And I'm doing so, Mr. Speaker, because even my attempt at bringing this to light was actually in the protection of the dignity of this house, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. So, th so that we Honorable are not... Honorable Kiari, yes. you have withdrawn and yes. apologized. Yes. That is enough. Do you now move your, beg to move your amendment? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Before I was uh, rudely interrupted, Mr. Speaker, I no. was making the, the point that, Mr. Speaker, I was making the point that the debt issue in this country is a mega issue. It's a concern, Mr. Speaker. And the, most, the, 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 the amendment that has been moved by the Honorable Kimani Ishongwa is seeking to ensure that we all understand uh, that, it, that the, the passing of the BPS and the MTDS in the format that it is should never be misconstrued to be an effort by this House to increase the debt ceiling of this country through the back door, Mr. Speaker. Kenyans are concerned that we, are, we shall soon be approaching the 8.6 trillion mark on debt, Mr. Speaker. So the moment we amend the committee report from the 400 billion space that we had and push it to 846, practically, Mr. Speaker, what we would have been doing is illegally and unconstitutionally increasing the debt ceiling, not following the rules that are given, Mr. Speaker, whereby such a motion ought to have come to this House through the Delegated uh, Legislation Committee 
as a substantive motion on its own, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, my business here today was very simple. My neighbor, the Honorable Kimani Shongwa, called me at 2 a.m. Washington, D.C. time to make sure that his amendment is moved on the floor of this house because his concern is great for the hustlers of this country, Mr. Which, 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 you, so, which, you, have, which you have a blader and honorable carrier. Yes. But if you also, if you look at again the starting order, that starting order number 107, it, if you become tediously repetitive, it is also disorder. So, you know, you know when you say one thing repeatedly, to the, in fact, sometimes I can say to the annoyance of some of your colleagues, because it's, you are repeating the same thing. I thought you should, you have quite, you are done quite well. In fact, you started off very, very well until you veered off into other areas. Now, can you conclude uh, and tell us who is going to second you? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I do have a stopwatch here in my possession, and I've been stopping at every moment and checking on my minutes, Mr. Speaker, because I do understand the time I've been provided for to move this. And Mr. Speaker, my attempt was to, 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 to move that the motion that was uh, moved by the chairman of budget committee be amended by inserting the following new paragraph that is appearing on the order paper. Yes. And Mr. Speaker, I do move and ask the Honorable Murugara to second. Point of order, which point of order? What's your point of order, Honorable Kajuang? Honorable Kajuang, point of order? Mr. Speaker, Sometimes I don't know. Maybe it's because we are on the, the last end of this session. But a lot of things are happening until I wonder, how did we do orientation? <laughs> you know, something happened last week, and it has been repeated this week, that a member can challenge the speaker. Let's do anything we want to do on the floor. But for heaven's sake, let's not be in a position that we think or compass that we can argue with the speaker, S seriously. Because you see, uh, last week it was the same, same thing that, uh, uh, that, that played out. Someone is held to be out of order and is told to do A, B, C, D or 107 to follow. And arguments ensue. Today, Mr. Speaker, the substantive speaker is on the seat saying do A, B, C, D and we are spending another 40 minutes on arguments. This is bringing this house to disrepute. I, I wouldn't mind any other, uh, any, any, a, any other issue out of order on the plenary. But to argue with the speaker, it is only in this session that I've seen anything like this, Mr. Speaker. Well, you don't want it to be seconded? Before it is seconded. You know, I think for, for the motion, it will be good procedurally. It will be good if it is on the motion. It will be, because it's already been removed, it will be better that uh, then you can uh, raise your point after it has been seconded or had been proposed. Yeah. Honorable Murugara. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the proposed amendment, the motion on the proposed amendment and without having to repeat or reproduce the words that are on the order paper, the proposed amendment really